How does someone sell a hundred million records, make hundreds of millions of dollars, employ thousands of people, but yet they can't even pick where they live or whether they drive a car, what doctors they see, what medicines they take, or even what they eat or drink? Well, you're about to find out. I'm Joshua Roberts, attorney at law, and you are watching Lawyer Up. In today's episode, we're going to be looking at the law behind guardianships and conservatorships, and we're going to examine them through the lens of the Britney Spears case, and we're going to talk specifically about the hashtag Free Britney movement. We're going to explain how conservatorships and guardianships are the same, and then how they are different. We're going to talk about when they are appropriate and when they are not. We're going to go through the legal process to obtain a guardianship or a conservatorship and the process to terminate one, which is exactly what the Spears case and the Free Britney movement is all about. If you are new to the channel, and you probably are if you are a Britney fan, I would suggest that you subscribe because we like to talk about a lot of current events and legal topics on this channel. If you get something out of this episode, hit that like button for me. If you got something to say, put it in the comment sections below. And as always, I love it when you guys share me on social media. Remember that the episodes are all available on all major podcast formats, and we've got merch. It's a great way to support the channel. Pick some up today if you haven't. So Brittany Jean Spears, she was born in 1981, and she is an American singer, songwriter, dancer, and actress. She is referred to as the Princess of Pop and is credited with influencing the revival of teen pop during the late 90s and early 2000s. Her first two studio albums, Certified Diamond, which is as high as it gets. It requires over 10 million records sold. That was Baby One More Time in 1999 and Oops, I Did It Again in 2000. Both were global successes became two of the best-selling albums ever, and made her the best-selling teenage artist of all time. In total, she has sold over 100 million records worldwide. And to put that in perspective, if you sold a record every minute, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, it would take almost 200 years to sell that many records. And while she has taken the last couple of years off from music, she continues to make millions with clothing and perfume lines. But we are not here to talk about Britney Spears' career. We all know she is a multimillionaire. What we are here to talk about is why she doesn't have personal control over those millions or even her own life. So first, let's talk about the relevant family players, right? We've got her dad, that is Jamie Spears. We have Britney's mom, that is Lynn Spears. We have Britney's sister, which is Jamie Lynn Spears. Confused yet? You should be. We have ex-husband and baby daddy Kevin Federline, we have her two boys, Sean and Jaden. Her current boyfriend of three years, Sam Asgari, who was interestingly born in Tehran, Iran. And last but not least, we have her favorite lawyer. Well, that would be me, of course. Just kidding. Brittany never calls me back. So Brittany's troubles started in 2007 when, depending upon who you believe, her divorce from Federline, her battle with bipolar disorder, and her amphetamine and methamphetamine use led to some erratic behavior, including shaving her head, uh, which was allegedly done to avoid a hair follicle test for illegal substances. In January of 2008, after her divorce from Kevin Federline, Spears refused to relinquish custody of her sons to Federline's representatives. Police were called and Brittany was hospitalized at Cedars Sinai Medical Center after police noted she was acting abnormally and appeared to be under the influence of an unidentified substance. The following day, Spears' visitation rights were suspended at an emergency court hearing and Federline was given sole physical and legal custody of their sons. Spears was then committed to the psychiatric ward of Ronald Reagan UCLA Medical Center and put on an involuntary psychiatric hold under California state law. 
Following those measures, the court placed Britney Spears under a guardianship and a conservatorship led by her father, Jamie Spears, and an attorney, Andrew Wallet. This action gave these two complete control over the person of Britney Spears and her assets. She was released from the hospital a few days later with the whole episode blamed on her stress and her bipolar disorder. Regardless, by the summer, she had regained visitation rights with her kids, was back at work, and in December of 2008, her sixth studio album, Circus, was released, making Britney Spears the youngest female artist to have five albums debut at number one, earning her a place in the Guinness Book of World Records. But the conservatorship and control of her life was still in her dad's hands. So what is a guardianship and what is a conservatorship legally? Well, in all states, an individual can be appointed by the court to make decisions for another individual if they are incapable of making them as a result of an incapacity or a disability. The court divides the decision-making authority between a guardian who makes decisions for the incapacitated person's well-being and a conservator who makes decisions over the person's finances and the estate. Now, to keep these straight, think that a guardian will guard the person, the well-being of the individual, and a conservator will conserve the assets of that individual's estate. And some say that the guardian is over medical and the conservator is over money. Whatever helps you remember the distinction. And this can be the same person acting in two different roles, or it can be two different people, or even a company to manage assets, as you will see in Britney's conservatorship. Now, in some states, a slightly different language is used. For instance, in Britney's case in California, they don't use the word guardianship. It's conservatorship over the person. So in California, you have a conservatorship over the person and a conservatorship over the estate. But essentially, it's a guardianship and a conservatorship. And these things don't just happen, right? They require a formal court proceeding where a judge must determine that a person is legally incapacitated before he or she will enter a guardianship or a conservatorship. And in doing so, the courts look at the definition of incapacity, which in most states is something like this. An incapacitated person is one who is unable, by reason of any physical or mental condition, to receive and evaluate information to such an extent that the person lacks the ability to meet the essential requirements of food, clothing, shelter, safety, and medical care. That's the definition. So to be incapacitated, you don't comprehend how to take care of your basic needs, food, clothing, shelter. You got to be pretty bad off, right? It's not enough that someone just makes bad decisions. It's that they can't even meet their basic human functions. And a slightly different standard exists for a conservatorship. To be incapacitated for a conservatorship means that the individual is, here's the definition, unable by reason of any physical or mental condition, to receive and evaluate information to such an extent that the person lacks the ability to manage his or her financial resources. So it has to do with resources. So to be incapacitated or disabled for a conservatorship, the subject can't comprehend how to take care of his or her basic finances, income coming in and debts going out. Again, it's not that someone just makes bad decisions with their money, because if it were, half of America would be under a conservatorship, right? It's that they don't understand the basic functions of finances. I had a recent case where an elderly person with Alzheimer's had his home foreclosed upon because he didn't understand that the mail contained his mortgage statements that needed to be paid. He had plenty of money in the bank, He just didn't comprehend that he needed to make the payment. Now, we were ultimately able to redeem his property. He got it back. But that's the kind of scenario where a conservatorship would be appropriate. So let's talk a little bit about the legal process. Once a petition is filed, the court will appoint an attorney for the ward or the protectee to advocate for them. Then relevant records are collected. Generally, these are medical records to prove up the incapacity, the dementia, whatever the issue might be. Doctors can also be called to testify at a hearing if needed. Now, at the conclusion of the court hearing, the judge will essentially make one of three decisions. 
They can deny the petition outright because not enough evidence was presented for the need of a guardianship or a conservatorship. They can declare the ward partially incapacitated or declare the ward totally incapacitated. And if the court finds that a guardian or conservator is warranted, they will appoint one or both. If the court makes a finding of only a partial incapacity, then the court will reflect that by giving the guardian or the conservator just very specific duties and responsibilities concerning the protectee. Now, once appointed in a full guardianship, the guardian is then authorized to make decisions regarding the care, treatment, shelter, education, support, and maintenance of the ward. For example, a guardian might decide where the ward will live, uh, what physician the ward will see, whether the person can drive a vehicle, and what medicines they might be required to take. Now, the idea is that the guardian should always use the least restrictive means available when acting on behalf of the ward or when making decisions on behalf of the ward. But as you will see, that doesn't always happen. Juxtaposed, a conservator is responsible for the protection and management of the protectee's financial estate. A conservator is in a fiduciary position, meaning that he or she must use the utmost care when managing the protectee's assets and must prudently invest and manage those funds. At least annually, a guardian and a conservator must file a report with the court regarding the particulars of the individual's living arrangements, their health and care, and then on the conservatorship side, an accounting of all monies received and all money spent on behalf of the protectee. Now note, these are adult guardianships. There's also a whole world of child guardianships where a child is without parents, whether it be by death or incapacity, or sometimes when they both go to prison, uh, then a guardian can be appointed until they become adults. There are also scenarios where children may come into some money that has to be managed for their benefit, even if they have both parents around. I run across this most frequently in personal injury cases where I have settlement funds for an injured child and we have to open up a conservatorship and it's managed for their benefit until they reach an appropriate age. So that's with children. That's not what we're talking about here today, but I wanted you to be aware that there's a whole different world of child guardianships. So back to the adult guardianships, and let's see how these rules played out in practice with the Britney Spears situation. So let's rewind back to 2008. A guardianship and a conservatorship is in place over Brittany with Jamie Spears' dad and Andrew Wallet, the attorney, serving. So between 2008 and 2012, Spears continues doing her thing in the entertainment industry, and in December of 2012, Forbes names her music's top earning woman for the year, with an estimated earning of $58 million. And yet, she's under a guardianship and a conservatorship. It's very odd. And from there, things continued through 2008 without much fanfare, at least not publicly. Her father, Jamie Spears, and attorney Andrew Wallet were the co-conservators over her person and her estate, and they basically managed her entire life and her affairs. And that was until things kind of blew up at the end of 2018. First, Jamie Spears suffers a near-fatal medical condition involving his colon, and he heads to the hospital. On January 4th of 2019, Brittany announced an indefinite hiatus and the cancellation of her planned Las Vegas residency. And basically, this was the beginning of her retirement from the entertainment industry. By March of 2019, Brittany is in a psychiatric hospital herself under the purported reason of stress related to her father's illness. Interestingly, that same month, Andrew Wallet resigns as co conservator of her estate after 11 years. So at this point, you have an ill Jamie Spears as the sole guardian and the sole conservator over Britney Spears. He has total control. Although at some point in there, he hires a Jody Montgomery to be Britney's personal care manager, basically to take over the role as her guardian. Now in April of 2019, things start to get real interesting when a fan podcast called Britney's Graham released a voicemail message from a source who claimed to be a former member of Spears' legal team. 
They allege that Jamie, not Brittany, had canceled the Las Vegas residency due to her refusal to take her medication, that her dad was holding her in the psychiatric facility against her will after she violated the no driving rule and that he was manipulating her in an effort to maintain control over the assets of her conservatorship. These are the allegations that gave rise to the movement to terminate the conservatorship dubbed hashtag Free Britney. It has garnered attention from a number of celebrities, including Cher, Paris Hilton, Miley Cyrus, Christina Aguilera, Mariah Carey, Brandy, Halsey, Justin Timberlake, Khloe Kardashian, Elon Musk, as well as the ACLU. So after this news broke, on April 22nd of 2019, fans publicly protested and demanded that Spears be released from the facility. And despite all of this hubbub, all Britney would ultimately say publicly was that, quote, all is well. She left the facility later that month, and again, things seemed to simmer down at least publicly. In September of 2019, Britney's personal care manager, Jody Montgomery, temporarily replaces Jamie as her formal conservator. But that was very short-lived, and not long thereafter, Jamie was reinstated as both the guardian and the conservator for Britney Spears. And again, things appeared to be calm on the surface. But we now know that trouble was brewing behind closed doors, and it blew up the following summer. In August of 2020, Spears' court-appointed attorney, Samuel Ingham, filed a motion to modify the conservatorship to allow her more control over her money, to reinstate Jody Montgomery as her permanent guardian, and to replace her father, Jamie Spears, with a fiduciary as conservator of her estate. In the motion, Brittany stated that she is strongly opposed to her father acting as her guardian and instead desires that Montgomery continue in that role. The motion further concluded that we are now at a point where the conservatorship must be changed substantially in order to reflect the major changes in her lifestyle and her stated wishes. So this was the first public statement by Britney Spears that all was not well in conservatorship world with her dad. And rumors were swirling that participants in the conservatorship were trying to force her to go back to work, and also that they were misappropriating funds of the estate. And this, of course, reignited the flames of the hashtag Free Britney movement. In response, dad Jamie Spears called the Free Britney movement a joke, its organizers conspiracy theorists. He stated, all these conspiracy theorists don't know anything. They don't have a clue. It's up to the court of California to decide what's best for my daughter. It's no one else's business. I have to report every nickel and dime spent to the court every year. So how in the hell would I steal something? I love my daughter. I love all my kids. But this is our business. It is private. Now, in response to that statement, there was a September court filing in which Britney's lawyers claim that hashtag free Britney is far from a conspiracy theory, and that she welcomes the support. It says that Brittany herself is vehemently opposed to this effort by her father to keep her legal struggles hidden away and in the closet as a family secret. Brittany welcomes and appreciates the informed support of her many fans. So then Jamie Spears, maybe tacitly acknowledging he had too much control over the money, suggests that attorney Andrew Wallet be reappointed as co-conservator to serve alongside him. Now remember, Wallet had previously served in this capacity from 2008 through 2019. However, Brittany pushes back. On November 4th of 2020, she files a motion to permanently remove her father as conservator in all capacities. And she argued against the appointment of Andrew Wallet as co-conservator, claiming in court documents that she was afraid of Jamie Spears and that Wallet is both too expensive and uniquely unsuitable for the role. Brittany instead petitioned to appoint a formal trust company as conservator of her estate, stating she would rather work with a corporate fiduciary who can offer both a physical office and a team of independent financial professionals rather than a single individual handpicked by her father who is a complete stranger to her. Now, probate judge Brenda Penny denied the request to remove Jamie and instead named Jamie Spears and the Bessemer Trust Company as co-conservators over the estate. 
This was the fiduciary Brittany wanted, but it wasn't the removal of her father she had requested. Well, dad didn't like this none too much, and he filed a counter motion to remove Bessemer Trust as the co-conservator over the financial estate and to return sole control to him. And on February 11th of 2021, Judge Penny said no to that and upheld the partnership between Jamie Spears and the Bessemer Trust Company over Britney's estate. After that decision, Britney's lawyers told the press, well, at least it's not a step backwards. But Britney did not give up. She filed additional court documents in 2021 stating that she desired and had desired for years to end her conservatorship. And when she had her first day in court on June 23rd of 2021, she did not hold back, calling the conservatorship abusive and revealing much more about her state of mind in the conservatorship. She stated, I've lied and told the whole world I'm okay and I'm happy. And I thought if I said that enough, maybe I'd become happy. But I'm not. I'm in shock. I'm traumatized. I'm so angry it's insane. I'm scared of people. I don't trust people with what I've been through. It's not okay to force me to do anything I don't want to do. I truly believe this conservatorship is abusive and I don't feel like I can live a full life. Brittany further addressed the court directly, saying she wants the conservatorship to end. Quote, This conservatorship is doing me way more harm than good. I deserve to have a life. I've worked my whole life. I deserve to have a two or three year break and do what I want to do. I deserve to have the same rights as anybody else does. And these statements from Spears were obviously alluding to the attempts of some people to force her back to work. So once these statements and these allegations of abuse through this conservatorship started surfacing, several of her longtime advisors started bailing out. Spears' manager of 25 years, Larry Rudolph, resigned, citing her intention to officially retire as rumors swirled about his conspiring with her father to force her back to work when she did not want to do so. Next, her court-appointed attorney, Samuel Ingham, who Brittany said never let her know she had the right to formally challenge the conservatorship, something that obviously would have been his job, he withdrew from the case. Then the Bessemer Trust Company wanted out as co-conservator. It cited Brittany's testimony as the reason. In a legal filing, the wealth management firm said, as a result of the conservatee's testimony at the June 23rd hearing, Bessemer Trust has become aware that she desires to terminate the conservatorship. Petitioner has heard the conservatee and respects her wishes. And so Judge Penny ruled that the trust company's resignation would be effective immediately. Now, the problem was this officially left Jamie Spears as Britney's sole conservator. And that was a step back. So now the fight was really on. So Brittany's personal care manager, Jody Montgomery, then files court documents accusing Jamie Spears of taking more than $2 million of his daughter's money to defend himself and remain in control of Brittany's estate. Then Brittany Spears' mom, Lynn Spears, she petitions the court to allow Brittany to choose her own new attorney in the case. The petition stated, now and for the past many years, conservatee is able to care for her person and in fact has within the parameters of the conservatorship. She has earned literally hundreds of millions of dollars as an international celebrity. Then at a second court hearing on July 14th of 2021, Brittany tearfully testified as to the cruelty of her conservatorship, stating that her dad needs to be removed today and that she would like to see him charged with abusing his position. She stated that she has been denied things as basic as coffee and a driver's license. She has been forced to take medication and even is told what kind of birth control she will use. She stated, if this is not abuse, I don't know what is. Now, the attorney for dad argued that he will not be stepping down, that he has not abused his daughter in any way, and that he had, in fact, turned over all of her guardianship duties to her personal care manager, Jody Montgomery. He stated that all he was in charge of was the finances, and it seemed that most of her complaints centered on her personal care, not the handling of her estate. The attorney for dad then asked for a full evidentiary hearing. 
Next to speak was the attorney for Jody Montgomery, who stated that given Britney Spears' mental health issues, forcing her to take the stand and testify against her dad was not in the best interest of her mental health. Ultimately, the court, well, it did basically nothing. The judge reset the case for hearing in September, but did grant Brittany's request to hire her own attorney. And she has now hired Matthew Rosengart, who is an attorney for several high-profile clients. Rosengart has called for Jamie Spears to voluntarily resign as conservator. Rosengart stated that they are going to examine the entirety of the conservatorship going back through the financial records since day one, and ultimately they will be aggressively requesting to end the conservatorship and that it be disbanded so that Brittany be free to live her life with her assets the way she chooses. Now, my favorite part of this whole story is when they asked Spears' boyfriend, Sam Asgari, how he felt about the situation. And he replied that Jamie Spears was a dick. That's short, that's sweet, and that's to the point. And for those of you who haven't been to law school, dick is a term of art that we use in the legal profession when we want to communicate the fact that we are not a huge fan of what someone else is doing. That's funny. I love the quote. Since then, Brittany's sister and her mom have recently tweeted support, but Brittany ain't buying it. She says, where were you when I needed you? So this thing is quite a mess. One thing is clear is that Britney Spears is not the kind of person who traditionally would be under a guardianship or a conservatorship. Very strange. So expect its future termination and probable legal action back against Jamie Spears for any improprieties in the handling of the estate over the years. So stay tuned. We will keep you posted on all of the developments with this case. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can keep up to speed. Now, if you are interested in watching this story play out, at least in part on the TV screen, the New York Times released a documentary about the situation called Framing Britney Spears. It premiered in February of 2021, and it's available on FX and Hulu. So that's the episode. Thank you for watching. We took a look at guardianship and conservatorship law through the lens of the Britney Spears case, and we talked about the hashtag Free Britney Movement. If you enjoyed the episode, hit that like button for me. If you got something to say or you have a question, put it in the comment sections below. If you are new to the channel or you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button for me. Last but not least, I love it when you share me on social media. Guys, thanks for watching. I'm Joshua Roberts, attorney at law, and you've been watching Lawyer Up. Send lawyers, guns, and money.